Hi. In this video, I'll talk about the basic working principle of an AC generator. This is part A of the video. The inputs to an AC generator are magnetic field. We have a north and south pole, and you can see the pink arrows pointing from the north pole towards the south pole. The second input is the motion of a conductor to cut those magnetic lines of force. And here you can see a green looking conductor. Uh, it's a rectangular segment which is uh, to rotate anti-clockwise. And the rotation is caused by an external source of mechanical energy such as a turbine wheel which is put under a huge waterfall. So with these two inputs, the output of an AC generator is to produce current. And as per the principle of the Fleming's right hand rule, the induced current is generated inside that green conductor the moment it starts moving inside the magnetic field. Let's look at another view of the arrangement. You can see the rectangular loop of the conductor and you can see the direction of the magnetic field. The motion of the conductor will be perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. It's all about understanding the directions. There are three directions in an AC generator. The direction of the main magnetic field, the direction of motion of the conductor and the third is the output which is the direction of the induced current. So if the direction of the induced current keeps reversing itself once from left to right then from right to left you have an alternating current as an output. Now how to catch the current? So the green segment of the conductor is divided into one left segment and a right segment just for description sake. So the left one here is a long one which is connected to a blue colored slip ring and the slip ring catches the current and from there we output the current through that blue plate which we call a brush and out through a terminal. Similarly the short end of the segment passes on the current to a large slip ring which is black in color and out through the orange colored brush to the terminal. Let's look at an animation which will make it uh, more clear. You can see the conductor rotating now and it is slipping against the surface of the ring that could be one reason why it's called a slip ring and uh, therefore the ring catches the current that's induced in each segment of the conductor. From the ring as I said the metallic brush will take on the current and it will output that through those small wires its end shown as a sphere uh, just for representation. What's important to see here is that the slip rings are continuous. They are not uh, having any gaps as we saw in the case of the commutator in a DC motor. The other important thing to watch here is that the conductor passes the vertical position in every rotation. So the conductor is horizontal and then it rotates anti-clockwise and uh, sooner or later it comes to a vertical position and then crosses it. The moment the conductor crosses the vertical position you can see here that the short arm of the conductor and the long arm of the conductor have different motions. If one was moving down before the same one is now moving upwards. So now let's get deeper into this vertical plane understanding. So you can see a translucent plane that I have put there which is passing through the green conductor which happens to be at this instant in a vertical mode. So the moment the conductor crosses this vertical plane, the conductor will move vertically downwards on the left hand side and on the other side it will be moving vertically upwards. Only then you will get an anti-clockwise motion. The forces must be opposed to each other in direction just like in a seesaw that creates torque. So to understand the Fleming's right hand rule to get the direction you can see here that the forefinger is pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. The force acting on the conductor from an external source is shown by the thumb. In this case it's uh, pointing upwards and then the output of the generator is the direction of the induced current which is shown by the middle finger uh, or the green arrow. Let's apply the Fleming's 
right hand rule to our situation we have to draw two hands the hand on the other side of the vertical plane will show its thumb pointing downwards because uh, the rotation is anti-clockwise the force on the far side of the conductor is acting downwards the force on this side of the vertical plane uh, on the conductor segment is acting upwards because it's rotating anti-clockwise so you can see the thumb pointing upwards the direction of the magnetic field doesn't change for those two hands you can see the direction of the middle finger is opposed in both the right hands so the direction of the induced current is automatically following the Fleming's right hand rule so as the conductor rotates and comes to a horizontal position, the direction on the uh, far side, left hand segment of the conductor is right to left, and the direction on the near side of the conductor segment is left to right. And this is as long as it's on the same side of the vertical plane. The moment it continues its rotation, the arms will change their position with respect to the vertical plane. You can see now that the same arm which was having a, a right to left direction of the current is now having a, a left to right direction of the current. So that's how the current direction switches on the segments of the conductor and uh, we get an alternating current at the output terminals between those blue and orange terminals none of them is positive or negative it will be alternately positive and negative and if we draw a waveform it will be a sinusoidal waveform zero to maximum positive current back to zero and then to the maximum negative current when we say negative current in an AC we mean that the current direction has reversed in direction and the magnitude of course remains the same so these are the descriptions of the various positions of the conductor and the functioning of the slip rings to catch the current and produce an AC output. Last, before we close, uh, we could go through this uh, animation once again. Uh, I hope uh, that the explanation was clear uh, and that it was useful to you. Thanks and have a great day.